What's up guys, this is Voxlide and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna take a look at using uh, Trapcode Particular to create this blood splatter effect. So this by any means is not really a uh, fluid simulation. You know, this isn't uh, real flow levels, but I'm gonna go over a few tips and tricks on how you can achieve a blood look uh, by using Trapcode Particular. So let's get started, let's create a new composition and I will make this 5 seconds and full HD so 1080p and frame rate of 30 should be fine hit OK and let's create a new layer a new solid layer and I will name this particular and right away I will add my particular effect and let's take a look I accidentally created a 5 frames composition, so let's go with 5 seconds and should be alright. Alright, so now we have uh, a 5 composition, a 5 second uh, composition. So inside my particular settings, uh, all of these settings should be fine for now. Let's go at the beginning of the composition and I will set a keyframe for particles per second and I will use maybe a value of 5000 and then I will move forward one frame and set this to zero and what this will do is essentially create sort of like this uh, explosion of particles so the particles are generated only at the first first uh, frame and then they stop generating leaving in this sort of like a uh, wave like uh, explosion of uh, particles all right and I can see here that my particles are disappearing before the five second mark so I can go to my particle seconds and I will increase the life per second, let's say to 6, just to be sure uh, they remain until the end of the composition. So this is sort of the look we're going for, and if I go inside my physics tab, I can go to air, and if I increase air resistance, let's use a value of uh, 1. And uh, what air resistance does is it's going to take the initial velocity of the particles, so how fast they're moving in the beginning, and they will uh, slow down in time based on these, uh, this air resistance value. So a value of 1 will mean that the particles slow uh, down around uh, the 4 seconds mark, and if I increase their air resistance, let's say maybe to a value of uh, 2, you can see they slow down much uh, faster. So uh, at uh, second two, they they are already frozen. So depending on what kind of uh, look and animation you're going for, yeah, you will need to play with the air resistance uh, value. Let's use actually a value of maybe 1.5, or actually maybe just one, and they will just freeze down entirely at around uh, four seconds, and this should be fine. Uh, of course, now the explosion is too small, so we can go back in my emitter settings and increase the velocity. And maybe even increase the velocity random just to create uh, a lot more of uh, variation between the particles. Just create a more organic and uh, random uh, shape. So this is fine, but uh, pretty sure I will need uh, more particles. So let's actually multiply this value by 3, resulting in a 15,000 uh, particle. And you can see uh, it starts to flicker a bit when I... Um, scrub through the timeline so I can change the random seed to generate a new look and uh, it should be this should get rid of the flickering all right so this is fine for now let's increase maybe the size to 10 let's uh, decrease the sphere feed uh, feather so we don't need any feather for our particles I will set this to zero and maybe increase the size random to 75 or maybe 50 maybe that's a little too much and also increase the opacity random maybe to 70 and let's go to our color and set the color to be random from gradient and then in our gradient I can choose this preset over here with just two stopwatches and the first stopwatch I will uh, select a uh, red and for my second stopwatch I can also select a red but I will just uh, lower uh, the brightness of this red so maybe just a darker red and this will just give me uh, give us a bit of um, variation uh, in the color so it's not uh, full on red and um, maybe even a darker red so we can uh, see the difference more noticeable all right and this should be fine 
let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this layer all right and on the second layer of particular i want to add a cc radial blur and i will set this to fading zoom and i will increase the amount and for the second layer of particular let's actually change the random seed just so we have a different shape and i will also add a effect color correction curves i will go to my alpha channel and i will raise up the curve just so we don't get as much uh, fading effect so you can see the result that uh, the setting gives us and the second layer of uh, particular will just sort of uh, help achieve that uh, spread out uh, blood effect and uh, give the, the splatter overall a more organic and natural feel and uh, maybe the particles are a bit too high for the second layer so I will go ahead and just switch this back maybe to uh, 7500 this should be all right maybe increase the alpha channel a bit more this is fine for now let's go ahead and add a adjustment layer and we will use this adjustment layer now to sort of uh, mesh uh, everything together so all the particles and create the sort of uh, the blood effect that we are going to go for so let's go ahead and start by adding a stylized roughen edges all right and for border actually let's set the edge type to spiky let's set the border to 10 edge sharpness 1 1 and maybe increase the scale to 200 and i will actually go back in my second layer for my second particular layer and i want to increase the strength of this uh, radial blur maybe to 60 so just get overall more of a spreading out effect and uh, let's go ahead and this is uh, gonna be all right for my rough on edges and i want to go ahead and add a stylized cc glass all right and let's go to my surface and i will set the softness and the uh, height to 15 and 10 and i will set the displacement to negative 100 all right so this sort of uh, thins everything out and brings everything in more together and now i can duplicate this effect so i will press ctrl d on my cc glass and this will duplicate the effect and for my uh, new copy of uh, cc glass i will increase the height to the height to 15 and uh, let's set the displacement to plus uh, 100 and uh, now if i go in my shading tab for my second cc glass and set the ambient to zero now you can see we're sort of uh, starting to get the blood effect and we are getting these uh, really nice highlights and uh, sort of like this uh, 3d and more uh, volumetric uh, feel to it all right so this is the result that we've got so far and uh, let's go ahead and actually just uh, take all of these layers and press ctrl shift c on my keyboard and this will uh, create a new pre-composition and i will name this uh, blood and uh, let's go inside the blood composition and i want to grab uh, the first layer of particular and i will ctrl c this to copy and i will paste it inside the blood the new composition so now we have the original uh, particle particular layer on top of the blood layer and i will solo this for now and let's go ahead and make the size a little uh, smaller for this guy and uh, let's change the random seed of course and uh, let's see what other things we can do so i want to use this layer of particular to add a little bit more uh, detail to the overall look and uh, just overall give it a more chaotic and uh, natural look so with this layer selected i can go ahead and go to my effect perspective bevel alpha and uh, right away you can see this sort of gives it uh, sort of like this 3d feel to it and just kind of adds a little bit more uh, volume to our blood uh, droplets and uh, i think the settings is good for now like this and let's go ahead and add a curves to this and i will just darken this up a bit and maybe raise the midtones and this will be fine let's actually unsolo this and see how it looks overall in the scene 
right so not bad maybe we can even go ahead and use uh, more particles so let's try a value of uh, 35,000 and change the random seed all right and this will be fine for now let's actually just increase the size maybe to seven or maybe six so this looks fine for now and I will solo this layer again and turn off my transparency and add one final effect to this which will be distort turbulent displace and for the amount and size I will use maybe amount 15 and a size of uh, 8 or maybe even a smaller size maybe 4 and you can see if I increase the amount you can see we're sort of uh, starting to get this uh, nice distortion and this will just make uh, the blood a little bit more uh, believable and this will be fine for now so if I unsolo this you can see uh, the blood is simply overlaying on top of the original uh, blood mesh and I only want the blood uh, particles let's rename this layer to blood particles so I only want the blood particles to show outside of the original uh, blood mesh so what I can do to achieve this effect I can duplicate this uh, blood layer I will place it on top of the blood particles and I will go ahead and add a generate fill I will set the fill to be white and now I can use this layer as a matte layer for my uh, blood particles so if I set the blood particles now to uh, luma inverted matte now you can see uh, the blood the original blood mesh stays uh, clean and uh, the particles are only outside of uh, the blood mesh which is the effect that we are going for so uh, maybe actually the particulars the particles for the blood the blood particles are maybe a bit too uh, high in size so I will set this back to five just because I don't want them that uh, big all right so this is overall the effect if you want to see exactly how I achieved the effect in the preview, you can check out the original project file. You can download it by following the link in the description of the video. And uh, let's go ahead and pre-compose all of these layers for now. So Control shift c while having all of the layers selected. And let's name this Blood Splatter. And let's see what we can do to make this look a little bit more uh, cinematic. So let's go ahead and add a background layer. So new solid. Name this to Background. Place it below our blood let's add a maybe a four color gradient and let's choose some of some colors over here so maybe a blue maybe a slight yellow and let's go with another bluish uh, mid-tone maybe let's add a very pale orange maybe on this side and blend all of the colors together let's adjust the points a bit and just create a more interesting background so let's actually desaturate this color a bit so maybe something like this and I will go ahead and make this a 3d layer so if I press F4 I can turn this layer into a 3d layer and if I add a camera now and let's use an angle view of uh, maybe 75 uh, if I select the camera layer and press C I can now orbit around my scene and just choose another angle for the blood so maybe something uh, more cinematic maybe something like this and let's grab our blood splatter layer and just uh, increase the scale a bit and in the original example uh, the blood sort of uh, splashes uh, a lot faster so what I did was if you right click your layer and enable time remapping you can now retime your uh, scene and I can increase the time here so maybe I want it to stop around the uh, two second mark so around here so I don't need this frame and I can also grab these uh, keyframes and press F9 to enable smoothing and if I go in my graph editor select the time remap I can now adjust the handles 
for these uh, keyframes. So now we have a very smooth animation. And uh, let's preview this. Alright, not bad. And you can also just select this uh, blood layer and go to curves and also increase or maybe decrease the colors a bit and uh, you know whatever else adjustments you may need and one other thing you can do here is if you duplicate this layer and for my layer below it I can go to generate fill and I will use a 100% black and let's delete the curves and then I can go ahead and add a fast blur effect and I will set this fast blur to maybe a value of uh, 10 or actually just use a value of 5 maybe and now you can see this sort of creates a nice shadow around the blood which sort of helps sell the idea that it's on a, an actual concrete surface so you can see without the shadows it's sort of like just floating in space and now with the shadows it actually feels like it's on the surface so that's another uh, trick that you can use and maybe use the fast blur to a value of uh, 2 so just uh, create a nice uh, shadow around the blood but that's it for this tutorial you can check out the original project file by following the link in the description of this video be sure to subscribe for more tutorials and if you learn anything new please drop a like i would really appreciate it and i'm out